Hello everyone, we're back after a few weeks off to let all the players and coaches get through all their fixture pileups. We're bringing back the Village Law SEQFC preview show. My name is Darren Lutton. Welcome back to the show. We've just seen the FFA Cup draw and the three Queensland teams, well, there's still Mackay and Ed Childer. Oh, we didn't find out how they went. But the three of the SEQ clubs have already been drawn out of the, the big bowl. So we'll just run through those names. So Power are at home to NWS Spirit. That's a uh, northern New South Wales team. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Brisbane City taking on Coburn City. I think they're a South Australian club. And Adelaide City hosting Logan Lightning. So Logan are the only team that, that gets to travel into state. So well done for them. And congratulations, Logan, for finally getting over the hump and making that top 32. They've been that far away for a few years now. So it's good to see them finally crack that 32. All right. Now we have got guests coming out of wherever things come out of. So... Let's introduce them one by one. So we've got our regulars. We've got um, Mr. Harding from Springfield United. <laughs> G'day, mate. Hello, mate. How are you? Good, good. We've got Liam Parslow. Hello. He's a regular. G'day, Liam. Hello. Still wearing my virtual background to load, but it's not. So ignore the curtains. <laughs> Keep the curtains. Keep the curtains. It's a good look. It's a good look. Now, the coaches that we've got on, on the show tonight have all taken over their teams partway during the season so we've hopefully rick coglin's going to join us he's been at peninsula power obviously taking in the draw with the the rest of the, the squad so hopefully he'll join us during the show but we've got three other coaches with us we've got belinda kitching who's taken over at narang g'day belinda hey how you going good now my understanding is that, that yep. there's out of all the coaches that are there in in Southeast Queensland, there are two female coaches, you and Zoe Bickerstaff, and you're both coaching men's teams. Is that right? Yeah. I found that out after Fred appointed me in the role and I went, oh, oh, <laughs> that's exciting. I didn't even realise it. Yeah, no, it's, I believe so. It's just the two of us, yeah. Yeah. So you were at Western Pride coaching the MPLW team. What yep. attracted you to this job? How'd you take it on? Uh, I basically gave myself a rest from coaching for, you know, I've been coaching for 20 years straight since I left the Matildas sort of thing. So upon having a break, I got to see the beautiful countryside of uh, Australia all the way to WA and back from June till November last year. And it was a random post. And I just read that how the club's been struggling and I just something just tweaked inside <laughs> saying, all right, the youth developing young players coming through and I just said, yeah, that's for me. So I got on the old phone and gave Fred a call for just a chat and saying, well, what would your thoughts be? Um, would you be up for an interview with me? And he goes, yeah, send us your resume through your kitchen. We'll have a chat. And I said, awesome. And that's how it came about, really. <laughs> so, yeah, right. And did you, was it week one or week two that you got your the, the club's first win for the season on the board? Uh, the second week, we, we had Broad Beach, which are top of the table. Um, and at that point in time, I had eight players, uh, nine with uh, who had an injury, and the 10 and 11 both played 90 minutes of the 23s beforehand. So from Broad Beach till now, I'm up to 14 that I've you know, finally got signed on. But the win against Tally was the week after, which was surprising. But it was for what they had shown in trusting me straight away and, and, and welcoming me is it's rewarding for them really. So yeah. yeah fantastic. Congratulations. It's great to see you back coaching again, Belinda. Yeah. Oh, it's well, exciting. Well. You know, sometimes when you say you need a break, you've got to do the break for the right reasons. And I've come back, I feel really, really fresh and I've been really welcomed by the club and by the players and I'm enjoying every moment at the moment. Regardless of results, it's a rebuild and that's all it's about. And their performances are, are shining through and they're noticing that about their own selves now, which is a really good thing. So, all right. We'll talk Gold Coast Premier League shortly. Yep. Oh, South Coast. South Coast have QPL4 or something. It's Gold Coast Premier League to me, isn't it? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> We've got David De Silva with us. G'day, David. How do you mate? You well? Oh, good. Now, your coaching resume is probably rivals Belinda's in length, I would suggest. 
<laughs> and you've just taken over at Brisbane City. Yeah, that's right, mate. Yeah, it's a new challenge. Um, actually copped a few. I'd love to see how many um, jerseys you've got in the closet. So it's been a bit <laughs> funny like that. <clears throat> um, but looking for a, a stable club with uh, visions for the future. So where were you prior? Were you you're in a, the QAS setup? Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Um, QAS, I signed with the director of football for the uh, QAS at the end of last season. Uh, so I left Morton Bay. Um, it was a bit of a tough decision, but the right one at the moment, at that time, I guess. But uh, I guess a job came up professionally in audiology at the PA hospital, which I just couldn't say no to. Um, a bit more stability with a young family and we know the volatility of football. So um, it was the right decision and we're just doing a few things in the background at QAS and then Matt Smith and I had a coffee a few weeks ago and um, yeah, things have just eventuated. So it's an exciting time for myself and for the club, I think. Yeah, fantastic. It's great to see you. Great to see you back on the sidelines. Yeah, love it, mate. I love coaching. Um, yeah, I want to be with the team, mate. So that other role that you had, that was, was that all office work? Uh, it was restructuring the program, mate. I think uh, QIS was an age group approach previously and kind of shook the cage a little bit and restructured it. I think a program of that level, it should be based on the quality of the player, not the age of the player. So a bit of a restructure and organisational change always has a consequence. Um, so, yeah, it was just the right time for me to move to a different, uh, different club and it just happened to be Brisbane City um, where we aligned. Good stuff. All right. And we'll talk FQPL1 shortly. We've also got Jason Hawke with us. G'day, Jason. Good evening. Now, you're the head coach of the Gap men's team, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Now, I've seen, um, uh, saw you guys at the beginning of the season, and I, ha I have to say, I, I wasn't too impressed. <laughs> it was a bit yeah. ordinary. You must have caught a good game. Yeah. But you've got some results now and you've taken over the side halfway through this season as well. How did yours come about? Yeah, oh, um, yeah, process of elimination, really. We, we, we had a men's head coach that I was assisting. He's had a bit of a lifestyle change, retired from the army, moved to the north side of Brizzy. Um, he's still doing our 18s. He's still involved at the club, but just all, all got a bit too... A bit too, bit too heavy. Was spending more time in the car and travelling, and decided to step away from the men. And yeah, um, as I was assisting him, uh, came in for a few weeks with a view to working out what we were going to do. So fairly, it was a fairly quick decision. And yeah, been been there probably six to eight weeks now. So yeah, and like you say, picked up a couple of results. We we we, we turned it around a little bit to from from where we were in the beginning. Um, yeah, starting to play some nice football. So I'm sure we'll have a, you know, a couple of steps forward and a few more steps back along the way. But yeah, we're starting to go in the right direction and the boys are doing well buying into it a bit. So um, yeah, hopefully from here on in, the results and the football will improve. Good stuff. All right. We'll come back to your competition a little bit later as well. But Liam, let's have a quick chat about the, uh, the top, top leagues at the moment. So... Yeah. It's a Lions Fest at the moment. MPL men's, Lions on top. MPL women's, Lions on top. Yep. Uh, look, it's, uh, well, especially with the women, um, I think if I commented during the week that I think the rest of the competition has got to start stepping up a bit more, I think. Uh, they Every year, they they just keep running away with it, you know, and uh, I don't see any real, real challenges to that at the moment. Uh, the Lions men's team, uh, similar situation. Um yeah, they had they had a pretty hard fought draw against uh, against Knights uh, just on the I think it was on the weekend. Um, so uh, yeah, look, it is they are they look like they're going to probably take it away again this year. And what's interesting about the NPL is that, that they've got the window open now, so there's been a lot of changes, yeah. a lot of a lot of player movement. Yeah. So Olympic are really close. Initial power just that little bit far away, although they've probably played a, an extra game or two. Gold yep. Coast Knights, they've got games in hand, so they could yep. really up the ante if they win their catch-up games. But Gold Coast United in fifth place. I would yeah. say that, uh, that's probably one of the most impressive yeah. starts of the uh, season. Yeah, they've had a they've had a couple of good uh, good results. Um, some, some pretty big wins too over some of the top teams there. So, um, no, they're travelling well. 
I think Gray, Gray would be very happy with that. Yeah, definitely. We'll come back to that competition. Hopefully, Rick Coglin's going to join us during the show so we can oh. talk NPL a little bit more. Cool. Flip over to the uh, MPLW. Yep. The big story in the MPL women's, apart from Lions being on top, is Eastern Suburbs in second place. Yes. Oh, they'd be very, very happy with that, I, I think. Um, you know, they've, uh, especially after the start of the year that they had, um, so they'll be very happy with where they are. Yeah, brilliant. They run that uh, that women's program on a shoestring and, uh, yeah. you know, promote from within. So Tony Panetta doing a fantastic job there. Oh, uh, always has done, he, um, Tony, hasn't he? And um, so they've always got a strong women's uh, program there, always got a strong women's team, and uh, it's good to see them doing well up, up in the second. Yep. Now let's chat uh, FQPL 1. Yep. Pride in third place, but they're all trying to catch Rochdale at the minute. Yeah, I think, look, I think, uh, Roachdale look pretty look really really strong uh, this 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 year. Um, I think it's probably finally their, finally their time. I think um, it looks you know for so many years they were just on the coattails of, of promotion and something always happened towards the back end of the season, didn't it? So fingers crossed for them that they get through the next few fixtures pretty pretty safe. But um, finally it might be their time to actually start going up. You know, so it's good to see. Good good. good. Yep. The other big talking points in that league is Redlands just a couple of uh, points behind Rochdale, so yeah. they're contending. The strikers, after such a promising start, have slipped yeah. down to fifth place on the ladder, which would consider yeah. the that they had in that squad was yeah they uh, had yeah they had the, they 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 did have the buy on the weekend, so um, so there won't be any points for them this week. But um, well, sorry, with the weekend just gone, but um, look, they they. Just announced a, a, um, a, another player today that I think is coming up from Coomera. Even though they're advertising this big English player, he's come from England and rah, rah, rah. He's only just, I think he's only just come up from Coomera, hasn't he? Really? Someone said to me this morning, so I'm, I'm not sure. What, anyway, so uh, yeah, look, they'll be, they'll be disappointed with 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 where they are for sure. Uh, so um, yeah, speaking of disappointing, yeah. Mitchelton. Oh look, Dan Panisi, mate. I've to me, and I've said this to a lot of people with 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 Mitchy. They're kind of a, the the point. Even though the points say that they're last, they went their their losses or their draws have just they've they've been there or thereabouts in so many games, and they've just they've just fluffed the lines right there. So to me, it's a it's a club that shouldn't be where it is, but the results unfortunately say that they are. You know, so they've, had, they've they've been in the league so many times, and they've just uh, they've played so well in some games. They've just they've just missed it. You know? Twenty two goals for twenty seven against. Not bad for a team in last place. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. All, All right. right. Let's bring David De Silva back into the conversation now. David, you've uh, taken over Brisbane City, who are sitting comfortably in fourth place. This Peninsula power side who are on top, can you catch them? Oh, we'll try our best to, mate. We've got them on the weekend, but I think I think where the club's at, <clears throat> there'd be a huge challenge for us to make make that top two and get promoted. But <clears throat> after meeting the, the girls and, and, I guess, sharing their commitments and what they're willing to commit to, uh, it's not off the tables. And while it's a mathematical possibility, we'll give it a red-hot crack. But I think... It's, I've been brought into the club, mate, to evaluate the environment and then give them a recommendation on what the environment needs to be like so they can challenge Lions. That's my understanding and that's why I've come to the club because we need more than one women's team in this state and we've only got one at the moment and I believe Brisbane City have the um, capabilities to. They've just got to have a bit of a longer-term plan. This isn't about short-term fixes. This is about building a club, <clears throat> pardon me, that's new in the female space and uh, creating the right environment that will attract the people that will challenge lines in the future. Are you going to be a long-term part of that as well, David? I hope to be. Um, that'll come down to, the, I guess, the club following through and um, delivering, really. You know, I think uh, the runs are on the board and I, I believe we've got the experience to do the job and get them up there. It just really comes down to committing to whatever we put forward and then going from there. I'd love to be involved with a club that can go on that journey and challenge lines in the long term. 
it's actually a ding dong battle in uh, this league at the moment. If you're in fourth on 20, but Mitchelton third, 25, Western Pride 26, Peninsula Power 29. Yeah, I was actually at the game where City played Pride and they were up 1 0 on the 84th minute and lost 2 1. So that was the game before I came in. So I was just having a bit of a look at the group and I think that result really. Um, hurt City's chances of getting up into the top two for the end of the season. But I think we'll build momentum as the rest of the season continues. I've got no doubt on that. And I think watch out for us in the finals. Good stuff. Now, it's uh, correct me if I'm wrong. It's Is it one or two clubs that go up? Two, mate. Two. One, two. Two up and then one down from the NPLW. One down. Yeah. And that can't be QAS. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> they won't finish last mate i'm very confident adam will do a good job yep yep good stuff all right let's have a chat uh about the fqpl2 liam i'll throw you back in yeah uh service <laughs> paradise oh sweeping all before them 38 points albany yep. creek on 32 in second place yep holland park and sanford just a little bit behind yeah but, uh, I think that um, who is my club? I think the big surprise in this competition is Turinga in ten. Yes, I don't know what's happened there. They've just they've just plummeted, haven't they? Um, they have. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what's 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 going on there. But you know, you know what? It it just takes a couple of signings here and there to come and go, as you know, and things can turn around. So hopefully, Turinga can certainly turn things around with a with a couple of signings there and reestablish themselves as being the club that they are. You know, yeah. but I think. I think Service Paradise. So I think uh, I think they're I think definitely running away with it. Um, they got big bold plans to to get to the top within a couple of seasons. But we saw but we saw what happened with with uh, with Caboolture as well. That's that's exactly what they wanted to do. And again, it just takes it just a couple of those side those player signings and things can things can really change. You know, the Junior United are the club that's in the the playoff spot. If yeah, they well, uh, maintain their place, then well, They'll be yeah. uh, playing to remain in the uh, FQPL. Interesting to, see, it'd be interesting to see whether Jared uh, uh, being appointed there now, uh, whether or not he can he can he, he can get him off the bottom. Now that Matt uh, Matt Proctor was it Matt Proctor that was there. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Jared's Jared's replaced him now from Western Pride. So yeah, we'll see. It. We'll see whether he can get some get some results for them. And it's nice to not see Coomer on the bottom of the ladder as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, they're always there, and they're always they're always just hanging about there, aren't they? They just need a bit more fortune. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's have a quick chat about the the Gold Coast Gold Coast Premier League. <laughs> again. Yes, Gold yes, South Coast Vans. Mm. Belinda, Broad Beach, yes. Broad Beach on top of the ladder. They've uh, they were mid table last season. So, uh, what's so good about Broad Beach this year? Oh, to be honest, like that was I was only a week at the club when we played against them ourselves, sort of thing. But we just had a focus on just our defensive structure to see if they can break our lines, and it took them sixty minutes to score the second or third goal against us, sort of thing. But they just seem to have a bit of discipline back in their their players, I guess, and the coaching staff just seems to be getting the players on the right track each week. So from my perspective, I think if they can continue that, and I think they've got a bit of depth this year too because I looked at their 23s and they weren't playing too bad at all. So I think if they're, both squads are playing similar style of football, they're going to go places. So I think they've got a bit of continu continuity there between two squads, which is good. So Yeah, and uh, a streaker to help um, break up play when things are going badly doesn't, doesn't hurt either, huh? <laughs> yeah, I saw that video actually. <laughs> it's happening it's, right. It's too bloody cold out there. So it's it's yeah. genius because I mean, if you if you streak at at a Brisbane Raw game, you're copping a massive fine and and jail, you know, and yep. stadium bans. What's going to happen? What's going to happen for this guy? Nothing. Nah. Absolutely nothing. Nah, not not there. I think with all these um. Leagues down the coast already. I don't know if if QPL two and three in Brisbane. I think not enough people there that'll be able to catch the person anyway. So <laughs> just let him go, keep going. No one made an effort, did they? <laughs> uh, grab, grab his clothes and say, "Yeah, keep walking, mate, and see what happens." 
<laughs> All right. So Rubina are in second place, but they do have a game in hand. So if they win that catch-up game, they will uh, retain top spot. Palm Beach in third, Southport in fourth. Looking at that ladder, I don't think there's too many surprises there, other than that, that Talabadra, who you beat, Belinda. I don't know. I, I mean, that was such a they're, dominant they're, they're team. They're falling in a heap. They're, they're yeah. really, I spoke to the coach after we beat them 1-0, and he was just shaking his head. He's just like, we're, we're gone. He goes, we either do a lot of soul-searching and, and just find a way to finish the year off, but he's got red card after red card. And all those players that are getting red card are just they're just frustrated, apparently, is what he was saying. And I'm like, well, how do you fix that? Getting a red card doesn't solve things. You know what I mean? Chasing that game that we played against him, he was one of the players was trying to chase my player. We're like going, what's the point? <laughs> you know, like, so the club's got a lot of things to fix, as do I at the rain, you know what I mean? But we're, I do believe we're nothing like what they are at the moment, you know what I mean? But we have... For ourselves, we just got to focus on what we can do each week to keep getting ourselves back to the, the good old days at Narang, competitive yep. in the league. So, and is it top one or top two? Sorry, bottom one or bottom two that go down? Bottom one, I think. I'm not That's quite sure. One. I haven't confirmed that. I'm trying not to stress that point with the players at the moment. It's my focus is I've been getting 11 each week, which I'm excited about because the players that have been brought in are not they're not ready for the season, if that makes sense. So. We have an opportunity against a couple of teams. I think, like the result against Musgrave four two, shouldn't have been. We let a goal go in. The, all the boys dropped their heads, but we still played for ninety minutes, and we should have scored three the last fifteen minutes of that game. And we just couldn't. We put one away, and we couldn't keep going. So there's opportunity there if the boys can see it. But we've just got a bit of a fight over the next couple of weeks to get numbers on the books, basically. So yeah. who yeah. you got this weekend? We got Ravina. So if we. It'll be another big challenge sort of thing. So, again, with Palm Beach, the coach was super impressed with how, because he used to be at Narang, he was super impressed with how the boys have really come to life again. Um, and I'm hoping against Rabina, if our defensive effort is 90 minutes, this time not patchy, or even if it's 70 minutes, there could be an opportunity to have a, a 2 nil result against us or not, not the blowout results is what we're trying to just trying to force that hand back into them getting frustrated and us enjoying what it's like to hold teams out, if that makes sense. So, Good yeah. stuff. Yep. All right. Let's turn our attentions now to the FQPL3 Metro Men's. Jason will bring you back into the conversation here, and it's the, the lakes that are on top of the ladder, but St. George, Willowong, they've got two catch-up games, can overtake them uh, in top place. Newmarket and Pine Hills in third and fourth. You're in 11th place, Jason. Is, uh, is, is this one or top? Bottom, I keep saying top. Is this bottom one or bottom two that go down? Bottom two. Bo bottom bottom two. two. Yeah. Right. So you're one point uh, behind Western Spirit. And then there's Mount Gravatt and Centenary who are easily catchable with a couple of wins. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I think we... we Nothing, nothing's changed. We, we probably had a woeful game against UQ. was probably the was probably the bottom, the the lowest we got. And um, you know, the I think a bit of soul searching with the guys. And you know, where where you know where do you want to go? You know, we've been at the bottom for a couple of years and haven't been able to turn it round. Had a pretty shitty preseason. You know, probably had twelve or thirteen senior players for the first five or six weeks of the season. Um, and, and we haven't really been able to get a squad together until probably the last two or three weeks. So um, no excuses from here on in, really. Um, we, you know, we, we've won a couple of games. If you'd had me on a couple of weeks ago, my opinion would have been any different. We, we were close to getting it right. And when you're down the bottom, you know, small things go against you. When you win a couple of games, those things go with you. So I'd expect us to... I'd expect us to march on from here, to be honest, and, and pick up a few more wins. And um, yeah, look, this season's kind of, you know, if we could get to the middle of the table, I think that would be our aim, really, and stabilise and then pick, pick up another couple of bodies for next year and move forward, really. Um, yeah, it's been been a diff yeah, a di difficult. The start was, was difficult. And um, I think we had to go down to a level where we couldn't get any lower. And that was probably the UQ game. That was difficult to take. And hopefully, you know, from there, we've started to move forward again and, and onwards and upwards, really, basically. 
And yeah. you lost your, your most creative player in the in your first game of the season as well, didn't you? In the cup game? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, look, we we've had a we we've had a string. Look, everybody in football the last couple of years with COVID and stuff like that. We we've had guys that have. Um, we, we've had a. I think we we worked out the other week. We lost about I think four players to ACLs over four years. Um, that were senior players, and when you've got a small senior squad, that starts to rack up. Um, lost the club captain last year. He's gone over. Liam's gone over to Sanford. That that was a bit of a blow. So you know, get, getting everybody together and pre-season was going well. And we lost a couple of pre-season before we even kicked a ball. And you know that was we, we never really recovered from that. But like I say, we we we've got a squad back together now. There's no excuses from here on in. And who do you fancy the the Lakes or St George? Uh, St George, I think. So that that probably going to get lynched because I know a lot of the boys at the lakes. But from what I've seen, I think um, I think uh, St George will probably edge them. I think. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so just, Two very good sides, but I think St George will probably just edge them out. Didn't St George just lose Nick Edwards to Thunder? Didn't they? What? Sorry. I think they just yeah. lost Nick Edwards to Thunder. Yeah. So they've so they've lost one of their one of their minds. One of their main men too, so that he. Uh, okay. Kind of striker from Capalabar as well, Cato, is it? Yeah. yeah. Kato, yeah. So yeah, so so St George, they're losing one of their uh, one of their front players there, so that could be interesting to see if they can back that up. Yeah, Cato is pretty handy replacement though, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. So it's great to see Cato still playing. Congratulations, yeah. mate. Have a have a good year. <laughs> All right. Quick chat about the FQPL2 women's. Taringa are on top. UQ just behind. Broadbeach and Rabina make it rounding out the top four. It's a pretty good competition, that. Uh, UQ got off to a great start, and Taringa have just slowly but surely overtaken them. David, have you taken any interest in this at all? Yeah, I was working with Liz Doherty at QAS, and she's with Taringa. Um, she's thoroughly enjoying it. Um, not taking it off too seriously in there, and yeah, I think they've got a good group at Turinga. I think um, with UQ and exams and everything, they're probably going to drop a point or two now. But uh, Liz is enjoying herself there, and I reckon they're going to they're going to be tough to beat from there. Good stuff. All right. Now uh, the FQPL four Metro men's North Brisbane are on top. Logan Metro, North Pine, and oh, well, there's three clubs rounding up the top four: Redcliffe, New Farm, and Ripley. So that's a fantastic competition as well. That's one to keep an eye on. We'll get Spencer back in the next couple of weeks and get him to have a chat about that one. Good. Yeah. All right. Scott Harding, are you still there? I am. Yes. Mate, uh, who's top of the league in uh, FQPL 5 Metro Men's? Not quite sure. You might want to remind me. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, we, um, it's a tough league. Like I've, I've been watching the last few weeks and we've done just enough each, each week. Um, but we certainly haven't had it in our own way. Like we had to go up the range last weekend and uh, play Willowburn, and that's always quite a tough, tough trip up there. Um, and we managed to come away with it. It was a, it was a quite a professional performance for them. But the previous week we played Jimboomba, who were bottom of the table. And that was a really wild game. That was, I mean, Jimboomba gave us a lot of trouble. So there's no real picking in this league as to who's going to give anybody a particularly hard game. So, for instance, Pine Rivers did Taragindi, who were in second. Pine Rivers are towards the bottom. It's very hard to, it's quite volatile in QPL five and six, I think, um, depending on whether you've got one or two key players out or um, whether you're taking the game lightly in some cases, I think, as well. And what have you made of Terry Gindy, Scott? They, of course, won the, the, the league below you last season. So they come in as the champions and they're making a good fist of it in second place. They are indeed. And uh, we've got to go over there and play them in a couple of weeks' time. So, and they are the one side that have beaten us this year. They beat us at home. Um, and Kevin, Kevin's a good coach. He knows exactly what he's working with. They, yeah. With respect to Kevin, I'm sure he won't mind me saying it. They got quite a limited game plan. Um, they, they knew what they were doing. They got the lead and then sat back and, and absorbed the pressure. And it worked very well for them the first time around. And um, Tara Gindy's pitch is a small one. It's going gonna, it's gonna to suit their tactics quite well. So it's going to be a very, very difficult encounter, I think. Hmm. Good to see Willowburn uh, creeping up the ladder as well. I think they got off to a slow start. Is that right? Yeah, we played them first round. Um, and then they went on a bit of a run after that. And then they ran into, I can't remember who they ran into. It might have been, Reg no, it was, um, it might have been Arangba, <coughs> who stopped them in their tracks. And then um, they're there or thereabouts. I mean, Brighton Bulldogs are the other one to watch. They, um, 
They've got a lot of good young players who are quite mobile. But they're a little bit naive in terms of their game, you know, game management at times, but they'll give anybody a game. They're, they're a good side. Good stuff. And looking at the FQPL 6 to round it out, Park Ridge are on top. Come on, Park Ridge. Get out of this league, guys. I think it's them and Old Bridge, isn't it? I mean, if you look at the results, Old Bridge are gradually rising up the table. They're doing their catch-up games now. <clears throat> Those two are the standout teams in that division. Logan Roos, I'm not even going to talk about them. They, they seem to be crashing and burning down the bottom there. Um, but the rest of them probably don't. Bethania might give them a bit of a chase, but I'm not quite sure the rest of the quality of catch. Ridge Hills are there as well. Uh, that's true. Ridge, sorry, I, I did them dirty. Sorry, Jason. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Ridge, Ridge will be up there too. So it'll be between two of those three fans. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Logan Village just off the pace there. Yeah. Well, well, Scott, I hope you go up because you need to keep because you, you need to keep that uh, keep Nick and Dave in uh, in in check up there with your switch clubs because if balls go <laughs> down, you know you got to keep that got to keep that rivalry going. Absolutely, don't worry. Ripley will be keeping a very close eye on us. I know they, uh, they seem to be very excited about what we do on a weekly basis. Um, I'm, I'm glad to see my tip about them's working, by the way. I, I tip them to be top four, so I'm glad to see them coming up the ranks as well. Yeah, yeah so I've got some tips. So I've just gone through the ladder there. That some tips are, are good. Some are, yeah. some are not. Yeah, some are not. That's right. Yeah, exactly. But uh, you get that, don't you? All right, now that's our, our run through the leagues. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about Toowoomba and, and Sunny Coast in, in future weeks, but we'll, we'll just leave it at that for now. That's Surely that's enough for everyone to go through. One thing I do want to talk about, something that, that came up uh, over the past few weeks was this three-strike rule for uh, for referee abuse or, or just abuse in general of, of club officials and the like. Now, guys, I've, I've messaged a couple of uh, people at FQ to ask how this actually works, how it, how it functions. So is it the referee that, that makes the report? Um, and then who makes the decision to award the strike? Can any, any one of my guests out there enlighten me on how this is going to be enforced? Um, I, I genuinely don't have any idea. I know that we've had a couple of issues with the refs and our Metro Men, um, Metro Men teams, so it'll be interesting to see what happens there. We, we've done a couple of internal investigations into a couple of incidents we've had at our club level, and we seem to be investigating them more thoroughly than the governing body, which is a bit of a bit of a concern, because if a club is going to get a strike, you would imagine it'd be on fairly incontrovertible evidence. You know what I mean? Um, you'd hope so, at least, because no one's got one yet. Um, so whoever gets one, the rest of the clubs will be studying that really carefully as some kind of guide. So it's an interesting deterrent. I'd like to say that I think um, the fact that there's no strikes is an outrage. Some of the behaviour that I've seen on sidelines is disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I think it's well-intentioned. I think absolutely there's got to be a crackdown. From a presidential level, I completely, completely support them in doing it. But you've got to make sure that the evidence that you're being presented is absolutely 100% factual. I think that's the thing. It's got to be... All, all different, I suppose, all different viewpoints considered. Um, and then if there's if there's hard evidence at that point, particularly if you've got video, I don't think you can really argue with it. Mm. Is, it is it it's it's club wide, isn't it? So it's not just the, it's yes, not just it's the senior team. So if you have yeah. if you have junior coaches or whatever that are, or junior you know club members that are that are rat bags, it's it's, it's the same thing. Because you've just had a few things over the, over the last few weeks at a, at a couple of games about uh, about a few club. Uh, coaches and that that have uh, sh that, sh that should be ashamed of themselves, especially in the junior ranks. Mm. So it's mm. um, I think I, I think a lot of the senior uh, 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 men and women coaches, I think they've been in the game long enough that they can pretty much um, uh, some, you know sometimes you have a bit of an outburst and you're and you're kind of embarrassed by it, you know. But I think lower at, at the lower end when you got when you got the more up and comers, I think. I think that needs to be looked at more because I think there's some there's some behaviour there that I've heard of that's just not good enough. Oh, look, there's behaviour I've seen that's not good enough. Yeah, I'll be perfectly honest with you. And I mean, look, I'm, I've got a club of 1,100 people now. Do yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So inevitably, you're going to get the odd instant here and there um, yeah. with any club ranks that isn't good enough, and that's yeah. where you've got to have an internal club culture that's strong and accountable. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's where every club has to probably look inward and 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 be really aware of the fact that they they are on display. 
regardless of what they like or not, they're on display. Yeah. Glenda or Jason, do you have an opinion on this? Uh, uh, sorry, Jason, you go. Yeah, sorry, yeah, not hugely. I don't, uh, just the, the nuts and bolts of how it's going to work, really, is, is the, the unclear bit to me, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's important. I think, like I said, if, there, if there's going to be a process, what does it look like? And I think if every club has that process clear as day, like I could notice there's some clubs that do their own, choose to do their own discipline straight away. If they've noticed something that's happened, they'll say to that person, you know what, I think you need to have a rest next week, don't come back. And at the end of the day, once that person's come down, they respect that and they stay away sort of thing. So, And then you get a chance to work out why it happened in the first place. So... If you're finding that clubs are already doing, you know, problem solving themselves, the strike world might only be just something that's there for worst case scenarios, for instance, sort of thing. So generally, I hope most clubs actually see that as a warning. They can actually speak about it before it actually gets out of hand with the three strikes being needed to be used. That's the way I see it. Well, I'd like to add, if you get a red card from the bench and you get sent off, that should be strike one. It should be just yep. that simple. It, it doesn't need yep. to be difficult, this. You get three yep. more goes. Yep. It's true. Right. Perhaps you should know better, really. Belinda, I'm going to give you the final word on this show. Yep. With the uh, Being an ex-Matilda, seeing this uh, qualifi qualification campaign for the, where, the World Cup that we're hosting and uh, the, the, all the preparation that we're putting into it, what do you reckon? I'm pretty excited. Pretty excited. I just, I just know when the day comes, I know that we're going to be ready for it and I know that the nation's going to be ready for it and that, that's New Zealand and Australia. I know both nations are keen for it to happen. I just look forward to it and I just hope everybody gets behind it because it's going to be something that's going to change Australia and New Zealand for a long, long time. Um, but I'm, I'm just can't. I'm just, I'm just feeling excited about it, basically. You think the staff since the man? It's irrelevant what I think. I think at the end of the day... <laughs> We've got to allow him. We've got to allow him to do the job that he knows he has to do to get him to a World Cup. And yeah. any comment that I make or anybody makes is not going to change what's going to happen in 2023. So yeah. I say tough calls have to be made, and it's got to be done somehow. But I'm not going to criticise anybody that decides to put their hand up and give it a go. So, but he, he seems to be relating to those players quite well. Can he take it to another level? That's what we'll see next year, 2023. So and to be honest, all of us were proven wrong with the with the Socceroos, like. Especially, like, I didn't think we'd qualify. I didn't think we'd get past UAE yet. Yeah, and, and that you know was I mean? so it's so it's 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 okay to say, uh, uh the the results, uh, especially against Spain, you know, everyone's like, oh, you know, this and that, and the squad's not this and squad's not that. But at the end of the day, once the World Cup starts, that's what matters, you know, and exactly right. And that's all you can that's all you can have belief in, you know. Yeah, yeah. Graham Arnold said they had 17 games out of the 20 out of the country. Holy crap. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, of course, people are going to criticize and say, who's this, who's that, yeah. what's happening here? But I believe when the day comes, just let them see what they can do. You know what I mean? Like, I think they've got the right people in the right place, and yeah, let it go. Let it let it just be excited as a nation, I reckon. So I'm excited. I think I've I've already put a month's leave in for July, August next year. <laughs> nice. I'm like, nah. I'm, like, I'm getting in now. It's not even my turn. And I'm getting in now. <laughs> yeah. What's it like? What's it like watching a Matilda's game for you, Belinda? Still exciting. I still get goosebumps. So I listen to the anthem. It's still the same feeling when when I was standing there, when I had the chance to have the jersey on myself, sort of thing. It's just you, you find yourself falling away from trying to criticise anything you can think of, but you get into the moment saying, "Wow, I remember those days. Oh my God, I take my hat off to these girls, all all boys that are just." wanting to wear that emblem with pride and I just the nerves just don't stop it is just a rush of blood and you just look forward to seeing what the 90 minutes brings really so yeah yeah and what was the highlight of your Matilda's career just the opportunity to put the shirt on <laughs> it was I was always you know I was thrown into a position at a young age sort of thing and then my name got called out as a third goalkeeper underneath the likes of Claire we uh you know, Claire Nichols and um, Tracy Wheeler, two of them, they were my idols growing up, you know what I mean? Like, I used to love just watching them make saves and just go, oh, geez, one day, maybe, you never know. And then when my name, I got an opportunity to be at the next camp when Tom Samani was the, the, when he coached initially before he came back, it was awesome. 
I just, I just decided that I just flew from them. My focus changed. It was just all about what could I do to maintain this opportunity. And, and that, to me, was the most rewarding thing, was being recognised for what I had done and then given the chance to continue. And then when I got a chance to wear that number one jersey, that was the best feeling in the world. To me, that was going to World Cup is one thing. Don't get me wrong. I don't take that away. But I think for anybody that becomes an elite athlete in any shape or form or sport, if you get a chance to put that crest on your chest, oh, my God, it's pretty special. Yeah. So, and that's, that's what brings back good memories for me. Yeah, top stuff. Yep. All right. What a great way to end the show. <laughs> <laughs> so to, to all my coaches tonight, best of luck with you with your new clubs hope you uh, you see out the season and uh get on that upward trajectory as uh you seem to be on already so uh, best fingers of luck crossed. with it all <laughs> fingers crossed yes yeah, thank, i'm, I'm thank, for the boys <laughs> thank, thank you all for coming on because uh it, it, it's a it, it makes i know it makes darren's job easy especially when when people volunteer to come on and it's uh it's always good to hear everyone's opinions and thoughts so thank you for coming on no worries yes, thank yeah. you for having me yes, well, thank you Chase, uh, Chase up, Ricky clearly got uh, a bit busy with that cup draw tonight. No worries at all. We'll get him on in future weeks. All right. And thank you, Scott, as well. That's my pleasure, mate. Good stuff. All right. This has been the Village Law SEQFC preview show. Great to be back. We will see you next week.